Hi, everyone. Um, yes. We're, I'm really pleased to have Shogo Omai as our guest today. He's, he's been such a wonderful force in uh, uh, advancing science in, uh, of the cerebellum. He uh, received his medical degree from Kyoto University, then uh, stayed and uh, got a PhD from Juntindo, where uh, Yoshiko Kojima also received her uh, her background. I, 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 uh, uh, Shogo, were you at the same time with Yoshiko at Juntendo? Uh, not not uh, um, the same time. I'm uh, not from Juntendo. Oh, oh, yeah. oh I, Scuba uh, University. Scuba, right? that's right. That's yeah. right. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, cross, cross. We are yeah, both in the <laughs> yeah, Kanto uh, part in, in Japan, but uh, yeah, not Juntendo University. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I apologize. I made a mistake. Anyway, um, he's best known for his work on discovering the temporal difference learning rule with regard to the complex spikes. And, um, but today he's going to talk about the work that he did with his wife on something completely different, a computational model of uh, the cerebellum. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Shogo. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Reza, for the wonderful introduction. And the, the thank you very much for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present a talk. And today I will talk about the uh, biological modeling uh, for the uh, two cerebellar uh, language processing, and uh, which provide insight to the how the uh, cerebellar local circuitry, particularly the Parkinson cell, uh, process uh, process language. Okay, so let me start with my original research motivation. The, when I was a medical student, I noticed a huge gap between the, uh, our understanding of human characteristic brain functions and their underlying circuit computations, and aspired to fill this gap. And however, the human characteristic functions still the research on the underlying circuit computation is difficult because there are no established animal models and uh, only limited neural activity data are available from invasive uh, recordings in humans. Therefore, to approach the uh, circuit computation, I decided to employ a biologically constrained artificial neural network, ANN modeling. Because the biologically uh, constrained ANN is invulnerable too, which can uh, be trained by uh, human characteristic cognitive functions, uh, to examine the network dynamics of local circuit computation. The, uh, building the biologically constrained ANN for human characteristic uh, cognitive functions is very uh, exciting and pioneering. Let me explain why. The, uh, this is a summary. Uh, let me use the laser pointer. This is a summary. Uh, for the uh, artificial neural network models of the brain. The, mo the models are categorized by two factors, whether the models are biologically constrained or not, and whether the target functions are human characteristic cognitive functions or not. Then, the, um, currently, no model has been proposed for biologically, uh, with biological constraints, and for uh, human characteristic cognitive functions, because all existing models for the human characteristic cognitive functions are based on AI circuits, uh, which are very different from brain circuits. Therefore, uh, building the biologically constrained model for the human characteristic cognitive functions is pioneering and leads us to understand the circuit computations underlying human uh, cognitive functions, where neuronal data are very limited. In order to build the, uh, the biologically constrained AMN, I focused on the uh, fascinating cerebellum. Although the cerebellum is considered as the center of motor control, it has broad functions containing the uh, human characteristic cognitive functions such as language processing. And cerebellar regions called cerebellar cognitive affective syndrome and autism. Furthermore, cerebellar anatomical circuitry has been proposed for more than 50 years. So the human characteristic functions plus 
the established factory make the cerebellum uh, my ideal target to build the uh, biologically constrained ANN to investigate human characteristic cognitive functions. Among the uh, cerebellar human characteristic cognitive functions, I focused on the two cerebellar cognitive language functions. Here, cognitive functions, uh, language functions, uh, refer to non-sensory, non-motor uh, cognitive, uh, no, non-sensory, non-motor language functions, such as sentence comprehension after word processing. Among such cognitive language functions, there are two functions in the cerebellum. The first one is uh, prediction of future words in a sentence. And the second one is processing of gr grammar, especially uh, syntactic processing. So let me explain the first language function in more details. So the first one is uh, a prediction of future words in a sentence. So imagine the, uh, this sentence, which contain contains the uh, a blank word, then the man will read the uh, blank. Then we can predict book, letter, or document to fit in the blank. For another sentence, the man will save the blank. We can predict boat or ship. During with this uh, prediction, the right lateral cerebellum is activated. And the, not only the correlation, but also the causal contribution the, is um, what's confirmed, has been confirmed by brain, uh, brain suppression by the TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. Okay, so in addition, biological constraints of the inputs, the outputs of the circuit has been proposed. The, uh, input words are fed into the cerebellum one after another, and the cerebellum produces the uh, predictions for the next words one by one. If the prediction is the, uh, long, the prediction error is calculated and the fed back to the cerebellum to improve future predictions. Okay. The uh, second language uh, function is uh, pr grammar processing, particularly syntactic processing. The clinical data and the neuroimaging data indicated, indicated that the right lateral cerebellum is, is also involved in the uh, syntactic processing. However, uh, uh, the, uh, this, uh, circuit, this circuit is totally unknown particularly uh, no inputs or outputs or has been proposed, even at theoretical level. Okay, so therefore I decided to start with the uh, first function with clearer biological constraints and examined if the uh, cerebellar ANN can be the uh, prediction circuit. Okay. At a, a cerebellar artificial neural network, ANN, I uh, used the uh, three-layer uh, three layer network the, containing the uh, input cells, granule cells, and Parkinji cells, and output cells in the deep cerebellar nucleus. And three layers are co uh, connected by feed the pathway and recurrent pathway. Okay. And oh, yeah, let me say one thing. So uh, this uh, each circle represents a group of neurons, and the circle inside uh, uh, the number inside represents uh, the number of neurons. Okay. And the um, the um, imagine the the network receive the uh, the sentence starting with U R, then. The first word U uh, is given to the network. And I assume the, uh, the sparse coding according to the coding theory of the uh, cerebellar input cells. The uh, 3000 input cells can encode 3000 words. And for the word U, only the uh, corresponding cell files. 
them, the, uh, the circuit can generate uh, parking cell uh, signals uh, and uh, the output signals. And then the output signal can represent the probabilities of the uh, candidates of the next word. According to the, the uh, physiological uh, observation, that the uh, predictive uh, signals of Parkinji cell persist uh, until the actual uh, event of the abrasive US up to 700 milliseconds. I assumed the, uh, the predictive signals of uh, predictive signals, uh, particularly Parkinji cells, uh, are also persistent in this uh, language context as well. Therefore, um, when the uh, actual uh, next word arrives, the difference between the, uh, di the prediction and the actual word uh, can be produced the prediction error and the prediction error is fed back to the cerebellum, to the cerebellum uh, artificial neural network to improve future predictions. Okay, and the, in the uh, recurrent pathway, the predictive signal based on uh, the, uh, the word U is also persistent. And can be integrated with the next word R to produce next prediction. Okay, does it make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, before training, the ANN produced random predictions. So the uh, correct prediction rate was close to 0%. However, after the ANN was uh, trained with a training data set of 80,000 sentences from classical novels, uh, it achieved uh, almost 40% of correct prediction rate. Oh, yes. Sorry, I have a couple questions regarding your yes. previous slide. Um, yes. If you, yeah, if you don't mind going back. So uh, not, generally, yeah. um, RNNs or like recurrent neural networks as defined in machine learning, they just have a, a weight that connects back to itself. Um, here, what, what exactly um, is the connection of this recurrent pathway? Are there like, um, yeah, how, how, how is this recurrent? Um, the, um, the, so the, you're asking that this the connection, right? So yes. the, um, the first the I, uh, assume the uh, this recurrent pathway uh, only uh, relay the information. So the, this uh, information, um, um, this pathway does not process any information. So this uh, uh, is completely relay pathway to uh, the convey the Parkinji cell signal uh, to the uh, to the yeah to the um, the Parkinji cell again. To send the signal back to the parking cell, parking cell again. So, uh, but um, later um, I um, the examined the uh, if the network can uh, the can preserve the uh, language processing the with uh, different numbers of the uh, cells in the recurrent pathway. So, so currently, uh, it effectively, is just a feed forward input that's delayed in time. Feed, so sorry, feed forward pathway for what? Um, so, as in the connections between these like one ninety twos, right? Like they're um, the connections are effectively identity, right? Like it's one to one. Right, uh, right, like right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, here, yeah, yeah, just to the conveying the uh, information. So it is just one to one. Yeah, yeah. And but later, uh, I examined it the, if the uh, the network can change the number numbers of the uh, neurons. For example, um, the output cell can be smaller and the uh, input cell 
it can be the, again the larger number of neurons. Then the network needs to the compress and decompress the information, but still the, the network worked. Got it. Um, and what is the prediction error? Is this trained just by regular supervised training? Yeah, so the um, the the uh, prediction error, the both the uh, the prediction and the correct answer uh, signal uh, is represented by represented as the uh, probabilities or the candidate words. So the simple subtraction can generate the prediction error, and the prediction error is fed back to the uh, server. Does it make sense? Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So yes, the so after the training, the network the produced uh, the almost forty percent of the correct prediction rate, and the uh, trained the ANN the uh, predicted uh, the. Sorry, the, this one. The for both after say the ANN predicted uh, ship, which is a synonym similar word to boat, and also the uh, for book after read the ANN predicted correct prediction the book. Okay, and so overall the correct prediction rate for bug based prediction for the object known was twenty three percent. And when I blocked the recurrent signal, the correct prediction rate the dramatically uh, dropped only to 2%. So therefore, the ANN can function as a word prediction circuit, and also the uh, recurrent circuit computation is essential. Okay, to understand the mechanism of the prediction, I focused on uh, three instances of there in two sentences. After uh, receiving uh, the, the uh, three instances of there, the network made, uh, made a different proper predictions for the next word. The, because the input for the feed forward pathway is the same, the only source of the, of the uh, different predictions should be the recurrent uh, signal. To examine the contribution of the recurrent signal to the uh, network dynamics, I uh, visualized the uh, signal trajectory of Parkinji cell for two sentences. Then I found that the Parkinji cell signals are different for uh, three instances of there, despite the same the input of feed forward pathway. So yeah, here, uh, yeah, let me explain more concretely. So the, uh, the uh, for this sentence, the man will uh, read the book. And for the, this, this sentence, the, uh, the man will uh, open the gate. And so it's the, um, for the, this, the, uh, the same, the, uh, two instances of the, the parking cell signals are different. And also the, for the first the, the, the signals are different. So this the difference in the parking cell signal should the, the source to produce the different proper predictions. Okay. And when I blocked the uh, recurrent signal, the parking cell uh, produced the same the signal for the all of the three instances of the. So the sentence information before the uh, input word there is conveyed by the uh, recurrent signal to Parkinji cell. So different information is integrated by the Parkinji cell to produce uh, proper dynamics to for the uh, next word prediction. Okay. Okay. Next, regarding the syntactic processing, 
we have、uh, no cue about the input or output for the、uh, syntactic processing circuit. So,、um, inspired by a remarkable、uh, middle layer processing that indicated by、uh, Reza's、uh, review paper in the Cerebellum and the、uh, previous ANN studies, the, I assumed that the, the middle layer of the、uh, prediction circuit can perform syntactic processing. So, therefore, I examined the、uh, signal of Parkinji cells in the prediction circuit for、uh, subject verb object words. Then, the Parkinji cell signals were、uh, clustered and well separated for、uh, subject verb object words. So, this indicated that the subject verb object syntactic information. Emerges in Parkinji cells. And the input output flow of the signal, the,、uh, the syntactic information was not above the chance level in the input cells, but it was as high as、uh, 95% in Parkinji cells. And the information Uh, was degraded in output cells, significantly degraded. And also, when I blocked the recurrent signal, the information in Parkinji cells was severely impaired. So the、uh, syntactic information first emerges in the Parkinji cells, and recurrent computation is essential. Okay. In, um, so let me、uh, go through the、uh, brief summary. The, in conventional ideas, the next word prediction and syntactic processing were considered as separate、uh, functions, and circuit computations were totally unknown. However, our ANN provides a single circuit computation for two language functions through training. The ANN acquired the next、uh, word prediction, and then the syntactic processing emerged there,、uh, spontaneously in the middle layer of the same circuit. And this single circuit computation for uh, two uh, language, uh, several language functions leads us、um, to a, a new rehabilitation method for language dysfunction. In which training in predicting the next word will improve the ability of syntactic processing. Okay, so to further examine the,、uh, the, the trained, the detail of the trained the artificial neural network,、uh, I investigated the synaptic weights in the input Parkinji cell connection. Then, It resembled the normal distribution. If we consider、uh, the positive component as the direct projection through parallel fiber、mm -hmm. and the negative component as、uh, indirect、uh, projection through molecular layer interneurons, then the uh, direct uh, component, the,、uh, the positive component, the resembled. The normal distribution part of the,、uh, the physiological observation. However, the,、um, the, our ANN did not have the peak of the silent synapses, the, which was the observed in the physiological observation. Therefore, I added the further、uh, biological constraints to the, the ANN. In which the input Parkinji cell、uh, connection is a combination of positively restricted pathway and negatively restricted pathway. And I examined the synaptic weights of the, these two pathways. Then the distribution、uh, contains the peak of the silent synapses, which was more、uh, similar. To the, of the, uh, the uh, physiological observation. 
okay, therefore, the ANN variant with further uh, biological constraint displayed more uh, biological synaptic weights. And also, I confirmed that this ANN variant preserves the uh, language abilities. Okay, as for the, uh, the biological constraints, you may be one, uh, worried that the, uh, the projection, the connection from the Purkinje cell to the output cells is deviating from the anatomical uh, convergence, uh, namely the uh, larger number of Purkinje cell projects to the uh, smaller number of output cells. This design is uh, uh, made to test the uh, syntactic processing ability without any help of external inputs. So the, I confirmed there is no syntactic information at all in the input of the feed forward pathway. And also I used the uh, same the, uh, word representation for the, uh, the uh, the correct answer signal. So the, the correct answer signal also do not have any syntactic information at all. And I could uh, uh, the examine the syntactic processing ability of this network without any help of the external inputs. However, uh, to add further uh, the biological constraint, of the anatomical convergence, the, I uh, designed the uh, convergent type the cerebellar ANN in which the output neurons are 16 and represent the uh, next one by uh, population coding. And then the output cell encoded only one word as a prediction. I arranged the uh, 10 modules to produce 10 uh, candidates for the next one. To read the uh, different learning for different modules, I assume that only the module which produced the uh, best prediction can receive the prediction error. So which is uh, the inspired by the cerebellar uh, multiple internal model theory, the mosaic model. Okay, um, then when I focused on the uh, top five modules, then the defined by the uh, in the defined in the training session, the, they achieved twenty six percent of the correct prediction rate overall and the correct prediction rate for the above-based uh, prediction for the object nodes was uh, 16%. So the uh, convergent type the A cerebellar ANN can also predict the next word, although the correct prediction rate was slightly lower than the original the ANN. Okay, and when analyzed I analyzed the uh, Purkinje cell signals for the uh, subject verb object words. The Purkinje cell signals were uh, clustered and were separated. And the, in the input output flow of the signal, the signal the emerged as the uh, uh, Purkinje cells. Therefore, the syntactic information again emerged in the Purkinje cells and the two cerebellar functions were acquired by the convergent type, the ANN. Okay, uh, let me- Could I ask uh, a question? Oh, oh yeah, before you yeah. Um, go on. Hi, Shogo, yes. um, I'm enjoying yes. this. Hi, um, thank you. I'm, I'm trying to reconcile. I don't know the uh, mosaic model as, as well as I should, mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. I'm trying to reconcile the idea the best module gets the error versus yes. like uh, the eye blink type models where you know the better your prediction, the less error signal you get. And so could you explain more about that? 
Yes. So the um the the of course the mosaic model is uh, more the complicated uh, the elegant but complicated model. But uh, I uh, used only the uh, specific aspect of the mosaic model. So the mosaic model is uh, designed to uh, the organize the orchestrate the uh, different modules to um, the to achieve the uh, orchestrated the elegant the uh, the function of the cerebellum, for example, the um, motor control in a difficult condition. And so in this model, the uh, the uh, different the uh, modules are trained by uh, the uh, the different teaching signals. So particularly only the uh, the module which produces the best prediction can receive the uh, teaching signal and the train. So the, the training happened uh, the, uh, one by one uh, sequentially and not, not simultaneously. And uh, this kind of the different uh, the training or different module can generate the uh, different uh, functions in different modules and the can be uh, the uh, can generate the uh, pro the um, the uh, better uh, functions orchestrated by the many modules, and also the, the in the original the uh, the mosaic model contains the uh, how to uh, the uh, integrate the output the the uh, to to uh, integrate different modules, but the, in this case the, I didn't contain that part of the mosaic model. So just the, the I use the aspect of the uh, training the aspect the, the in which the best module can receive the teaching signal. I guess it might help me understand better. How do you mm -hmm. uh, it, with a more concrete um, explanation in in the specific case? Mm -hmm. So how do you define best? So you have ten predictions, ten modules predicting the next word, right. and then how right. do you define which which of those ten is the best? In, in yeah, this yeah. trial. Yeah, sorry. The, yeah. So um, let me explain more uh, concretely. So the, uh, the output is uh, uh, coded by the population coding of 16 neurons. So the 16 neurons can represent uh, uh, the uh, world, world information. So in this case, the, uh, the world information contains 3,000 words to represent. And then the, uh, each the output neuron generates the, uh, the uh, prediction signal for the next word. And also the uh, correct answer is uh, uh, delivered to the, uh, so the correct answer signal is delivered to the, let me say, inferior read. And this, this also represented by the population coding by the 16 dimensions. And this the comparison can generate the uh, prediction error. And the, the, if the signal is uh, uh, the best match uh, the, the signal of the correct answer, then that is considered the best prediction. Does and what does, does, what does best mean? Like how, um, how is best the, match determined at the level of the comparison between the olive and the and yeah, so the, the, uh, the this is a population coding. So the this is represented uh, one point in the sixteen dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. And also the this the uh, output signal also the uh, one point in the sixty dimensions. So the comparison between the two points, the if the uh, the, the comparison is the is smallest, then. The, that's the, the 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 difference. The the best, the smallest difference indicates the best prediction among the these ten the different modules. Does it make sense? Okay, so that that's helpful. But but you're imagining that computation would happen somewhere else. Computation happens. I I assume that or it's happening in the nucleus. Yeah, in the all in the all of it happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, because the inferior olive can the, uh, compare the actual uh, it has the, the, the event, yeah, and, and also the the the, the, uh, the cerebral prediction. 
the inferior origin can compare the yeah the prediction and the actual prediction of the cerebellum. So, Great. Yes. Thank you for that okay. explanation. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, let me uh, summarize my uh, today's talk. So first, uh, uh, through training, the cerebellar ANN acquires the uh, next word prediction, and then the syntactic information emerges spontaneously in the middle layer of the same circuit. And second, the recurrent circuit computation is essential for, the, for both language functions. And third, the two functions of the uh, ANN is robust in variants of ANN, particularly including the uh, convergence type cerebral ANN. And fourth, the ANN leads us the understanding of the circuit computation underlying human characteristic cognitive functions and to develop therapeutic interventions. Okay, and the, uh, let me, finally, lastly, uh, let me uh, discuss the uh, future direction of the, this uh, uh, the, uh, modeling study. So according to the uh, uniform uh, site architecture of the cerebellum, the, we can expect the, a common circuit computation of the cerebellum, probably across all functions of the cerebellum. However, the uh, recent and Ivory and colleagues the, the, uh, discussed about that and mentioned the uh, it is uh, likely, however, uh, that the this computation will not be easy, easily captured in the functional terms we can intuitively describe so, uh, ideas such as timing, automatization, prediction, error correction, and inter models, internal models. Rather, a uh, common principle may, may only emerge in terms of more abstract language describing the population dynamics of, of neural networks. So the, in response to this, the, I um, would like to uh, propose the uh, network, the uh, dynamics of the, our ANN can capture at least the two language uh, uh, processing so language functions of the cerebellum. And also, uh, furthermore, if we can uh, consider that the next word prediction as the language case of the prediction functions of the, the of, uh, next event of the cerebellum, which is theorized by internal model theory, and the, if we consider we can consider that the, uh, the syntactic processing is a language case of the sequence processing, such as grammar like rule extraction from a, a sequence of events. The a single circuit computation of the ANN may be generalized to uh, more wider ranging cognitive functions of the cerebellum, which derives derived from the two uh, fundamental functions of the cerebellum. So yeah, this is uh, very exciting, the, uh, the, uh, the exciting goal, the happy goal the, to, for my uh, the future uh, the study. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, so, so uh, with this, uh, I would like to conclude my uh, talk and the I uh, would like to thank the, all the members here. And particularly, I would like to thank my wife, Keiko, the, uh, who continuously supported uh, my project and also the, who contributed the, uh, to this uh, computational work. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to have your questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Shogo. Thank um, you. Thank you very so, much, Lisa. Yeah, let's, let's, let's have some questions for Shogo. Mm -hmm. Shogo, at the beginning, I'm sorry. Yes, was there go a question? Ahead. No. Yeah, I was going to ask, but I can go after you. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Hi, Shogo. Um, 
so I, I was just wondering, I mean, I guess yeah. maybe a lot of people ask, why do you think the cerebellum would be so good at this task, but language modeling? A lot of people would say, oh, well, the cortex is in charge for higher cognitive things. You show the yes, recurrency is important here, cerebellum, but we know the cortex is probably more recurrent. Um, what is it do you think about the cerebellum that makes it, you know, appetizing or, or interesting? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you you uh, so you asking about the uh, difference between the uh, neocortex and the cerebellum, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's very good question. So the, uh, the of course the uh, the the neocortex is the center of the uh, the language output. So, but the 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 neocortex and cerebellum are so interconnected. So the uh, neocortex need the cooperation with the cerebellum. And so the cerebellum the the uh, the uh, contribute to uh, some at least some aspect of the language processing in the neocortex, and so particularly I would like to uh, yeah emphasize the uh, these uh, two uh, functions the uh, prediction function and also the uh, syntactic processing the um the maybe uh, yeah the uh, I can summarize these two functions as the uh, sequence uh, processing function, the prediction in a sequence of events and also the rule extraction in the sequence. So the particularly the cerebellum is uh, uh, involving in the language processing the, in the, uh, the particularly in the, in terms of the sequence processing. So that is my uh, intuition. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Shogo, you work with um, uh, mice and um, uh, other yes. uh, small mammals. How, how are you going to use animal models to um, better understand these, this model that you described for uh, learning of uh, making predictions associated with things like words and syntax? Yeah, that, that's a uh, very really great question and also the difficult question. Uh, but the, I believe the uh, the um, the very um, attractive point of the cerebral study is uh, the this the uh, uniform site architecture of the cerebellum, and we can expect the common uh, the circuit computation. So the particularly I uh, like. Uh, the study of the time processing of the cerebellum, uh, because the, it is uh, suitable to study the uh, network dynamics of the circuit computation of the cerebellum. So I would like to uh, the examine the network of network dynamics of the cerebellum using the time processing and try to uh, the generalize that kind of the physiological observations to uh, the language processing. The, that is my idea. The, the, of course, there is a gap, but I believe still the, we can have the insight the, into the, uh, the, the very sophisticated human characteristic function. Very good. Um, Jennifer has her Thank you. hand. Yes. Yeah, I think I have a very strong recurrent circuit because I'm still thinking about this um, best word prediction um, and mm -hmm. was thinking more after um, I asked the question about a conversation I had with Mike Mock half a year ago mm -hmm. uh, where mm -hmm. he was saying, mm -hmm. oh, I know I what the cerebellum does. The cerebellum does <laughs> whatever the olive tells it, teaches it to do. And so um, this, this question of how the olive um, does the computation to determine the best prediction of the next word may be critical, right? And and right. yes, the cerebellum has some other nice features, but that one is maybe really important. So, are there different ways to define it? Like best best prediction is, um, you know, if, if the the correct word that the olive got was a, a verb, and the prediction mm -hmm. was a verb, is that a better prediction or is there some other more, um, is there some other kind of information that, you know, have you played around with how the olive defines best? Uh, so 
Uh, the difficult question. So the uh, the so I, I do not assume the uh, the the uh, smart inferiority. So the uh, the inferior as, as I mentioned the the I assume that the inferiority is just calculating the uh, difference between the two points uh, represented by the uh, the correct word information and the uh, the prediction from the survey. So the, the, the if you believe the do not have to uh, be smart to to understand the meaning of the word, but I believe the uh, this the um, the correct word information the uh, originate in the neocortex, and this can be smart the uh, the representation in the brain. So the, for example the the. Uh, the functional imaging data indicated that the, uh, the neocortex can represent word information in a, a smart way in complex, uh, in, in, uh, to compress the data in from word information with a relatively uh, smaller dimension. So mm -hmm. in that case, the, uh, the, the words uh, with uh, similar meanings uh, are represented by the similar signal. Then the the the, uh, the word information are organized in the uh, the the lower of the dimensions and it can be compact and the similar words made us a cluster in the uh, the, um, the 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 representation world. So that the so I think the uh, this the uh, word representation for the correct answer signal can be smart. And so in that case, the whole example, bad words are uh, the closer to each other. And then the, the, if the correct answer signal is smart, then the inferiority do not have to be smart. So they can only just comparison between the two distance, then the, the smart the comparison can happen. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Peter, you have your hand up. Um, very interesting. I'd like to ask you more about this model and, uh, yes. and uh, some of the results. Um, so effectively, the, the, the recurrence is basically just presenting the word that occurred like two words ago to the circuit with the current word, right? So yes. in that case, so, right. So is it surprising to you then um, that you know, because this is a completely feed forward circuit without that, um, without that input otherwise, right? So then mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's not particularly surprising to me that in a sequence task that depends on previous inputs, that mm -hmm. presenting more input about what happened before um, in a feed forward way would help the model learn better. Um, sorry, I I I couldn't uh, uh, catch the, the your question. So the uh, you were uh, the asking about the uh, feed for the uh, computation and also the recurrent computation, right? And the, uh, yes, uh, yeah. So the I assume the uh, we can assume the uh, the information. The, uh, the the past information can be encoded by the recurrent pathway, and mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah, because the uh, the Parkinjis predictive signal of the Parkinjis uh, can persist, and the newly coming the word information uh, is received from the uh, feed forward pathway, right? So the the these the uh, two information can be integrated at the Parkinjis cell to produce the next prediction. That is, uh, uh, the by my basic idea of the circuit. Uh, the, what's the uh, point of your question? The... Right, I, I understand. I'm just saying that you're without this recurrent pathway, you're essentially using um, a feed forward network to perform a task that is dependent like that that depends on state right like that that requires essentially like recurrence to learn so 
so I guess like it's not particularly surprising that if you were to give like state input, meaning like words from like, you know, words that it encountered two words ago, um, you would get better performance. Right. So oh. like your current accuracy is at 40%. Um, mm. If you were to use a completely recurrent network or any of the like, you know, the machine learning uh, units out there like LSDNs or whatever, the accuracy will presumably be a lot higher. The the I the my circuit is a uh, um the uh designed to to follow the biological constraint so the um the the accuracy is not the highest so the, of course the uh, recent AI circuit can produce the much higher uh the correct prediction rate the uh, um uh, but the the uh, still I I think the forty percent is really good number the high uh, probability of the correct prediction. And uh, so I asking about the uh, the co contribution of yeah, each just, pathway to the so, prediction. Yeah, sorry to be so critical here, but I, I, I'm just not, um, I'm not convinced that this is a, a um, biologically realistic model of the cerebellum rule mm -hmm. that the Purkinje cells use is, you know, is assumed to be like an anti heavian and it depends on some interaction of the error with the, um, you know, with the uh, input firing of like, of the, uh, with the input activity of the granular cells, right? And mm -hmm. if you're using a back propagation rule right here, um, mm -hmm. there's no anti hebbian plasticity, and it not only depends on this error rate, but it also would depend on the input firing rate, as well as some sort of error that gets assigned backwards, like step by step, um, mm -hmm. from the DCNs to the Purkinje cells, right? So mm -hmm. there's, I mean, that's probably not happening. Um, I, and, I don't uh, think so. I don't think so. So the, in the um, cerebellum, right? I don't think so. um the um the I think that it can happen. I, it can happen. So the uh, recent the um uh, the uh, physiological study uh, done by mm -hmm. the uh, the Boris Barber so indicated mm -hmm. that the uh, the parking cell running can um, follow the uh, the gradient descent. That he called that gradient stochastic gradient descent. The um so yes. the yes yeah but so the gradient the descent is uh, mathematically equivalent to the back propagation, right? So the I the yeah I assume that kind of the uh, the smart the uh, the learning mechanism in the cerebellum that that is uh, uh, the um, the gradient descent the mathematically gradient descent. And the mathematical equivalent to the back propagation. But it can happen so, in the cerebellum. Yeah. So in that paper, they essentially did it's a it's it's like perturbation learning. Um they I think in that paper they the, they assume that gradient descent, um yes. like the back propagation algorithm cannot occur in the cerebellum. So they basically used a different algorithm. It's it's Mm -hmm. without any back propagation right to mm -hmm. to basically learn and um, that's a that's a perturbation um like way of uh, perturbative way of performing gradient descent here you are performing mm -hmm. back propagation right the error is going back from the output cell back onto the Purkinje cells mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah uh, right. So, but I, so I, I like don't understand biologically, the, um, um, so the, so I, 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 right, just, but, I, 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 I understand the, the, the error. Yeah. Right. Biologically, the error is going straight from um, the inferior mm -hmm. olive onto the Purkinje cells, right? It's uh, there's likely not a direct. Connection like the 
all of our input to the output cells is not likely doing anything. Um, and also there's no, there's no error transport from output back to contingent, like in the cerebellum circuit. Mm -hmm. I, um, the particularly for the, uh, the, the Parkinji cell, the, I, I think the, um, the, um, the back propagation and the uh, gradient descent is the, the mathematically equivalent. So the back propagation is uh, just uh, uh, easier way to calculate the uh, gradient descent mathematically. So the 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 mathematical uh, the uh, computation uh, should not happen in the cerebellum like the back, back, back propagation, but that is uh, equivalent mathematically equivalent uh, to the, uh, the gradient descent. So the final the, uh, the change in the update of the synaptic weight should be the same between the box propagation and the gradient descent. So yeah, the, I uh, use the uh, box propagation, but the, I assume that uh, the, uh, the, I updated the synaptic weight the following to following the uh, the gradient okay. descent algorithm of the cerebellum. Okay, yeah. I see. So you're effectively yeah. assuming also, that the cerebellum yeah. performs um, gradient descent, right? Which which right. which honestly is a pretty huge assumption that is you know it's quite controversial if any biological mm -hmm. circuit performs gradient descent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. But the uh, the in recent uh, um, dates, uh, I think the uh, the the AI the uh, processing is uh, uh, pretty uh, the uh, similar to the uh, brain functions. So the many people try to find the uh, back propagation like mechanism even in the neocortex. And the, I, I think the the back assuming the back propagation in the uh, or the gradient descent in the neocortex is. Uh, are more crazy, but the, for the cerebellum, I think that is more uh, biological. Uh, that is my assumption. Okay. Yeah, alternatively, have you thought about using any kind of meta learning framework in which back propagation is used to train um, the actual learning rule that the circuit could implement? Are you familiar with meta learning? No, I, I, I don't familiar with the meta learning. Okay. I will. No, I um, didn't I'll, I'll communicate with you like outside about this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I love the questions, Peter. Thank you so much for the detailed delving into the how the um, model was designed. Um, it was wonderful questions. Uh, Shogo, thank you so much for the time. Thank and you Jennifer, very much. Questions, Joe. Thank you for your questions. It's good to see you guys. Uh, hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Other uh, before we leave, uh, uh, have a wonderful Tuesday and uh, uh, take care. Or I can just mention it. Thank you very much, Reza. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Bye bye. I can just say that. Bye bye.